and welcome to Cards by Kendra. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down below. And if you are, welcome back. Today I'm excited to share this card that I made with an ink blended background using the products that you see here. For my ink blending, I'm using Distress Oxide inks in Mermaid Lagoon, Blueprint Sketch, Twisted Citron, and Black Soot. I'll also be using the Hero Arts background die. This is called the Lines and Swirls Texture Fancy die. And I'm also using the Picket Fence Studios Dandelion Wishes stamp set. It's got several different sentiments on here, which I love. And I'm also using some Nina Solar White 80 pound card stock to do my ink blending on, as well as some glossy black paper for a frame. The Ranger Archival ink in jet black and some clear embossing powder. So let's get started. Now this is actually a background that I made several months ago that I never ended up making a card with and since then I've learned some new techniques so let me first tell you what I did wrong. I went directly to my paper with my domed foam applicator rather than dabbing off the excess ink. I didn't realize how much ink I had actually put on the applicator until I put it on the paper. So you can see there's kind of like a really dark line right above where I'm ink blending the Mermaid Lagoon right now. But I end up blending this together and it turns fine, turns out fine in the end. Um, so I, I did a little more on the Twisted Citron than what I meant to. I was trying to divide this into fours, but um, I'm kind of glad I, I did this because whenever I blended the Twisted Citron and the Mermaid Lagoon together, it gave me a different shade between the two. So here I'm just basically laying out the colors and then I'll be going back in and blending them together. And to keep my fingers from putting fingerprints all over my background, I decided to stick a sticky note on there. And this seems to work okay. I also have used address labels too. Um, I am by no means an expert at ink blending, and this is something that I've been working on the past few months. So I'd like to say that I'm much better at this now that I've had a couple months of practice. And like I said, this was one of one of my first ink blends. Um, I made this several months ago, and then when I was cleaning out my craft room, I found a bunch of backgrounds, and I said, well, let me just make some cards out of these. So here you can see I'm just kind of going back and forth between the colors so that they have a good transition. Now you may have noticed that as I was trying to blend these colors, I pulled a little too hard and I bent the paper, but that was one of the reasons why I ended up deciding to use that textured background dye so it would hide where I bent the paper. I'm all about trying to salvage things, and so one of the reasons why I set this background aside was because of the bend in the paper, but I said, you know, I'm sure I can figure out something to do with this. and using that background dye um, really did cover up any lines that I accidentally made when I was trying to ink blend this. So as you can see now, I've kind of got a little bit of a, um, a teal green going on between the Mermaid Lagoon and the Twisted Citron. And I don't know why, I just have a, a lot of ink in my Twisted Citron pad. It's just very, very juicy. So I need to remember that next time I use it. You see how much ink is on my applicator there? But one thing I've definitely learned about ink blending is that you have to have patience and don't give up. Um, I don't feel like I have smooth enough transitions sometimes. And like I said, this is one of the one of my first few ink blended backgrounds. Um, I feel like I've gotten better, but I have had to learn to have patience with it. I love pattern paper and I would just assume use pattern paper, but I've been trying to step outside of my comfort zone and do new techniques, things that I haven't tried before, and this is one thing that I am determined to get right. So now I'm using my Distress Sprayer and I'm just adding a little bit of water. This helps the colors to blend together a little bit and oxidize. And I did have a couple of extra drops, bigger drops than what I wanted, but that's okay. I end up using some bling to cover some of those up anyway. So like I said, this is several months later. I am now using this background that's been sitting around. I'm putting the background dye. I'm running this through my big shot, big shot, big shot dye. Mm, can't talk tonight. Big shot dye cutting machine. And as you can see in the bottom left hand corner there, it cut off the little corner. So I guess I had a little bit too much pressure. But I went ahead and rubbed the background with my anti-static powder bag. And I am using 
my misty stamping platform so that I can easily do several coats with my ink because I will be heat embossing this. Now I decided to use the sentiment that says let the wind guide your wishes because I thought that background dye looked like wind swirls. Now I'll be honest I wasn't sure if this was even going to stamp out or turn out I should say um, because of all the texture on the background but I was afraid that if I stamped everything first and then put the texture on it would cut up my image and so that's why I opted to try this after after the after the fact um, here I tried to use a dry erase eraser to put pressure but it didn't didn't do the trick so I'm just gonna go back to using my microfiber towel it works I don't have one of those chuckies that everybody's been using in their videos and I, um, I don't mind using my microfiber towel honestly all right so I'm putting several coats on here and then I'll be adding some clear embossing powder. Now I did pour all of my clear embossing powder into this handy little container that I like to use so that I can keep my mess down to a minimum. And then this way I can hold the background over the container and use my spoon to apply it and I don't have to worry about having to line up my scrap paper or whatever it is that I used to use and this just helps to keep things a little cleaner for me because I tend to get powder everywhere whenever I heat emboss. Now I've said this before in some of my other videos, I like to use black ink with clear embossing powder rather than trying to use clear ink with black embossing powder just because I, I have better results. So now I'm just applying my heat tool. I'm letting it heat up for about 30 seconds and then um, Try not to get too close, but I want to make sure that I, I get this real good because of that texture. You can see a little bit of the lines there, but I really don't know how I could have avoided this. If I had stamped this first, I think it would have cut all this up and it wouldn't, wouldn't have turned out. So now that I have that shininess going on there, I'm going to try to fix this um, little corner piece. So I'm using some of my Hero Arts Infinity Rectangle dies, and I'm going to use not this one but the next size down because I want to have a, a black frame something shiny that matches my black embossed image here and so I'm gonna go down to the next size I think this is the third size down from the biggest and um, when I ran this through it cut off the little edge there that I pointed at and then the top right hand corner so now I'm gonna take a piece of this glossy cardstock and run that through with the next to the biggest rectangle piece and I'll be using that as my frame. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down using some Nuvo liquid deluxe adhesive and this is my favorite adhesive to use because it dries clear in case any seeps out and it dries pretty fast but it gives you just enough time to put or you know kind of scoop things where you want it. And so I'm hoping that I can salvage this with those two little pieces I've got to try to puzzle back together. Um, so yeah, that top right hand corner and then the little piece next to my dandelion. Is that a flower? I know dandelions are weeds. What do you call that little thing? A little flake? Seed? I don't know. <laughs> so here I'm trying to use my tweezers and pick this up. Not having good luck. I'm like, just forget it. I'll use my fingers. Um, so I'm piecing this back together and then I'm going to let this dry a little bit. Now for my card base, I decided to use this teal colored cardstock that I got from Michaels. This is by Recollections. It's their heavyweight 110 pound, and this actually comes in the Oceans paper pack. And so I have cut it in half and scored it down at four and a quarter. And now I'll be attaching my background to my card base using that same liquid adhesive. Now I really like the Oceans paper pack from Michaels because the darkest shade in there matches Mermaid Lagoon really well and then there's another lighter shade of teal that matches Peacock Feathers and so I really like to use those as my card bases. Um, here I'm just adding some bling. This is by Doodlebug Design. It's some of their black gemstones or rhinestones and I'm just trying to cover up some of those water spots that I didn't really care for and I'm sorry my hair kind of gets in the way. I had it pulled up on the top of my head and I've 
curly, naturally curly hair. And today was one of those days I just decided not to fix it. And I just pulled it up on the top of my head. But this finishes off my card. I think it turned out really pretty considering all of the mishaps that I had happen along the way. You have to let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like it, give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget, you can also find my work on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, and my website at cardsbykendra.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.